What am I seeing as the emergent future? There are some of these already in place, some are in the anvil and some will come slowly. Mobile based services. Few of the companies have already got into providing some of the services on mobile. The first and the easy ones are leave application, travel approvals, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, your PF balance, your payroll uh, communication. All of that mobile based has moved on to many companies. Instantaneous feedback on each service transaction at the point of service. We heard Schneider talk about it yesterday. But to my mind, this is still emerging. And what kind of feedback can you get instantaneously? And how, how many people will give you this instantaneous feedback? We all know. When we travel on the flight, there is a feedback card which is passed around. Hardly anybody fills it out. Yeah. When we uh, go and uh, stay in a hotel, we get a mail from them saying that please evaluate, but we don't. Yeah. This is a big challenge. But if we don't get that instantaneous feedback, how do we measure ourselves and how do we improve? So organizations are making it simpler and faster. If you had to only say whether I like the service, I didn't like the service, I'm indifferent to it, or it's just what I expected. If it's going to be that simple on a mobile, you just need to press and give it, it adds to a good thing. And then reach out for greater focus group discussion to improve. Improvement is a different thing, but at least getting the instantaneous feedback. So companies are actually wanting to do more and more. Technology, while we are going for the SAPs and we are going for the people soft and things like that, organizations are beginning to use that more and more in the back end. They are wanting to build on top of it a customized user interface which is unique to their specific context. And that's clearly emerging and I think soon uh, organizing uh, companies uh, like SAP and others will start offering that as part of their, uh, you know, uh, template itself. Variable pricing based on transactions rather than the fixed, you know, with cloud and things like that, it's becoming more the nature of the game. And therefore, companies don't have to think about huge investments, but think in terms of number of transactions and even therefore small companies are able to get onto the bandwagon of shared services. Semi-urban and rural service centers, clearly I see it as an emerging future. Blue collar employees, 98, 99% of the companies avoid getting into the blue collar space. It's usually the white collar employees that they provide shared services for. But companies are slowly getting into the blue collar space. Kiosks are being put in shop floors. Employees, if they can do their banking on mobile phones, some factory workers are doing this today, why can't they use a kiosk and get their shared services working for them? And that's the bridging that's happening. And my own sense is a year from now, you will have demonstrations of companies coming and saying here how this is working on their shop floors. As we speak, this is being piloted in a few organizations. Shared services for blue collar. Analytics, we've heard quite a lot about it and that's clearly coming. End-to-end -end RPO, yeah, becoming more and more popular. Organizations which were insourced are moving into the hybrid model. Having done it, having managed the not to let go kind of a mindset, they're realizing that there are some processes which they are happy to sort of move outside the organization. So insourced, pure insourced companies are becoming hybrid models. Intuitive user interface, yeah, is clearly something which enhances experience, which gives the promptness, and that's what a lot of companies are moving to. Greater degree of self-service and auto approvals. Policies are being changed. Companies are in fact now saying, if you don't get an approval within 48 hours, take it that the approval has been given. Yeah. Delighted employees saying that I used to worry my manager has not seen the mail and he has not approved my you know, loans or he's not approved my leave or he's not sort of you know, approved my appraisal of my subordinate. There are time limits and within which if it's not done, auto approval. System just takes it. That's the policy revision that companies are moving to. 
So, in some way shared services is shifting the uh, HR's credibility in the eyes of employees, clearly. Dashboards for HRBPs at periodic intervals. Rather than asking HRBPs to mine out their information from the raw data, templated dashboards of things that an HRBP will require is being created on a weekly basis or a fortnightly basis or monthly basis as the need might be and it's sort of hitting their desks and it's making HRBP's quality go up because when you are provided with this dashboard then you tend to therefore talk that language with your stakeholders and therefore there's a uniform experience that stakeholders are experiencing from HRBP's in terms of being top of the game. I shared with you the factual bits. Yeah? What's staying on top of my mind, my takeaway is about what's really the shift and what's the state of shared services in India today. Flexibility matters. Indian companies, Indian business leaders, Indian HR, for them flexibility matters. While it might be causing headaches for uh, the uh, shared services heads and managers, flexibility matters. Relationship is key. You just can't automate everything and you just can't say I have to do everything in front of a computer. There are some things where relationship is sought and for things to work seamlessly, relationship makes a difference. In my shared service provider, I wish for domain knowledge. Good news for Pankaj and team, but not so good news for many other service providers who are saying, we are an IT company, we are a process company, we will break it down to bits and pieces, we will deliver process. But the Indian mindset still, still seeks for a domain knowledge. And it's not just in shared services. I can tell you, as a leadership coach, I face this when clients are choosing executive coaches. They want domain knowledge. It may not make a difference, but they like it. And that's true with shared services also. So if it's HR shared services, I'd like to go with a company and vendor who knows this domain. Not somebody who's done manufacturing shared services and says, I can also provide you HR. So very clearly that bias is there. A friendly technology is preferred. Technology, yes, but I want it to be friendly. And that's where the user interface element is making a big difference. Cost considerations continue. Whether you like it or not, how much it's going to cost me now and on a continuous basis is something that I'm interested to know and I will base my decision on that. Discipline decides the extent of success. Organizations which are not able to sort of get people to adhere to processes are struggling. Organizations which have been able to break that hurdle are really tasting phenomenal success as far as shared services are concerned. The challenge is not in building capability for shared services people. The real challenge is in building capability amongst HR business partners to do their new jobs. And when they don't learn to new, do the new job, the new ask of an HR VP, they keep interfering in shared services. And shared services is not able to lift its game. And when they are not able to do their jobs, the organization is asking, saying that, what are these guys here? I ask them questions. What questions do I therefore ask him? I ask him about why isn't uh, recruitment happening on time? Why isn't payroll being 101% right? Those kind of questions. So it is the capability building of HRBPs, which is a real challenge that's being faced today. And change, of course, is the constant. And you change, and you've got to change again. And you've got to change again. And you've got to change again. It's never stopping, it's never stopped. And therefore, the mindset and the culture to accept and keep changing is what's going to be most critical for success of shared services. And I just want to also look into the future. If this is how far we have come, what else is round the corner? And these are my guesses. I have no facts or tangible reasons. But I feel centers of expertise are going to become part of shared services sooner rather than later. There's no reason as to why centers of expertise should be
customized for every organization, every division. It is at the end of the day another shared service, though of a different nature, it's not transactional, but it's probably transformational. But it's a shared service and it can be shared. There are companies today who get this from consulting firms. So if consulting firms can be the service provider of COEs to smaller companies, why can't shared services grow in their ambit from being just transactional service providers to transformational service providers? Pankaj, I'm happy to consult you on this and charge a fee for you from you on that. But that's the way I see shared service organizations growing. Retained HR. What is being called as HR business partners today? My take is that soon it's going to get split into HR business partners and HR employee partners. The employee partnering is being ignored. The business partnering is what is really taking center stage. And that's a fundamental gap which is becoming bigger and bigger and organizations will soon have to ensure that they provide focus on both. COEs will go, but partnership within the organization, both at the business level and at the employee level, is going to get center stage. And yesterday we had a big debate uh, by her people saying that getting inducted into the transactional bit is something that all of us grew through when we started our careers. And that's not available today to the new entrance into the organization and that is something that will be a problem in future as people move to business pro partnering roles. I tend to disagree. I think as things become more automated and things become more predictable, the exposure to payroll processing, the exposure to leave management, the exposure to employee life cycle letter generations are not going to be important. The new inductees will only have to know as to how some of these things are critical and manage those rather than do it themselves. It's very similar to no longer do the finance professionals and companies get exposure to drawing up a p and and a balance sheet in the company. No longer do sales and marketing professionals learn to merchandise products in the trade outlets because these are all outsourced to agencies which do that. Accounting is today tally. If you know how to manage the tally software, it's more than enough. If you know how to manage the brief to the merchandising outlet, it's enough. The learning for this need not happen in the organization. The learning for it has to happen in the business school. My take is that the HR curriculum in business schools will get changed. They will provide the input into the transactional aspect as required. And companies don't have to worry about how do I give them the exposure to payroll and how do I give them exposure to life cycle management. Like I said, this is just the beginning. And I intend to sort of continue this journey of studying this journey of shared services in the country. And MHRDN is keen to sort of track case studies of practices. And all that we look for from companies which wish to participate in these case studies are send your details, your HRSS model, portfolio of coverage, why HRSS, what's enabling your HRSS, what are the challenges you're facing, what's the positive experience and what's the best or novel practice that you are having. And if you wish to participate, send that in details and we'll be happy to sort of process that. Visit your organization if you feel that there is something really standing out and we could sort of give you an opportunity to present it in the next summit when it comes. Feel free to mail to me. Yeah, This is something that I'm passionate about and I intend to sort of keep in touch. So any of you who wish to share your practices and your journey, I'll be delighted to know about it. Thank you very much.
There's no time for question answers now, but I'm going to be around, happy to discuss with you and answer your questions over lunch. Thank you, Arish, and uh, it's your commitment and passion. Many like us are members of the fan club. Friends, let's hear for Arish Devrajan. And I request uh, Mr. Kamal Singh to do the honors by presenting a memento to Harish, please. Friends, it's going to be a, a T15 vote of thanks, not even T20, because time is not there. So, uh, keeping it very, very short, but as HR professionals, we must acknowledge and thank those who have contributed to what you see here. So, what Harish presented is clearly something which you understand that a lot of effort has gone into building what you see right now. So, uh, first of all, we'll start with uh, our summit director, Pankaj Bansal. Uh, Pankaj uh, has a vision and that vision more national charity network aligns on this space of shared services we are sure uh, national charity network will become and this summit on hr shared services and technology will become the reference point of shared services in india in south asia and it will grow so thank you pankaj for leading this the way you have seen the speakers the way the common thread was available the way meetings were there we had the core committee members who contributed and every